Hello, my name is Nell and I have things to say about disability, chronic illness and mental health. I live with all of these things and in my videos on my channel I talk about them. Partly to reach out to other people who might live a life a little bit like mine and to hopefully let them know that they're not doing this alone. But I also talk about these things to raise awareness to people who don't have a lived experience of these struggles and to hopefully give them a little bit of insight and understanding. If that sounds like something that interests you, I would love it if you would subscribe to this channel. Come back every Wednesday when I upload new videos. Let me know what you think of my videos in the comments section. And if you know of somebody who would benefit from one of my videos, please feel free to share it with them. A few weeks ago, or maybe a month ago, I uploaded a video about how I had recently been able to travel on planes and trains and buses, many of those things for the first time in over 10 years. And in that video, I mentioned that I would be doing a further explanation on the plane side of things. I'm going to start doing that today. Today, I'm going to talk about my experience with Virgin Airlines and why I will not be attempting to fly with them again and why I would not recommend them to any wheelchair user. I will later be doing a video on Qantas Airlines and why I will fly with them again. But today, I will talk about Virgin Airlines and why I think they don't care about their disabled customers. Now I initially went with Virgin Airlines because their flight times and their flight prices did suit me and what I was looking for. Now a standard thing with um, with mobility needs on flights is that you buy the ticket first and then you apply for special assistance which feels a bit risky but that's the way it goes. So with Virgin Airlines I looked up online their maximum um, dimensions for wheelchairs and I thought okay if we dismantle my wheelchair then I will be able to have my wheelchair fit within those um, those dimensions I checked with the manufacturer we could manufacturer we could take the seat back off my wheelchair and lay it down so and the weight limit note the weight limit was not included in the maximum dimensions so I bought the ticket and I filled out a special assistance form and in it <clears throat> I put the dimensions and I put the weight limit because that was asked and I filled out all the other information. I sent that off and I received an automated reply saying that I would hear from them um, within a few days letting me know if I'd received basically permission to fly. I didn't hear anything. So I contacted Virgin Airlines and I explained the situation and I was transferred to their special assistance line where there were people trained in this particular area who would be able to help me. So I spoke to this person and I explained the situation. She looked up my information and she said, oh yeah, your wheelchair can't fit. So uh, yeah, that's not getting on the plane. And I said, it can't fit how? Oh, it's too heavy. It's 175 kilos, so it's too heavy. And I said, okay, what's the maximum weight limit for that plane? Oh, I don't know. Okay. Um, how can I find out what the maximum weight limit is for a plane? Oh, I don't know. Okay, what am I meant to do now? Book another flight? Okay, how do I find out what the maximum weight limit is for wheelchairs on that other flight? Oh, I don't know. Okay, so I can't get on that flight. Oh, you can get on the flight, just your wheelchair can't. Okay, I'm wheelchair dependent, so if I can't get on, if my wheelchair can't get on a flight, Neither can I. Okay. So I said, my wheelchair and I cannot get on this flight. Is that correct? Yep. So flight's cancelled. I can't get on. Yep. Okay. Thank you. It was one of the most frustrating phone calls I had ever had. One of the most dismissive, disrespectful phone calls I had ever had. And this was the special assistance line. Because I booked my tickets through Flight Center, I called them and I inquired about getting a refund and they said shouldn't be a problem because because Virgin had been the ones who told me not to go on the flight. Um, as long as I gave Flight Center whatever paperwork Virgin gave me to confirm that it was their call about the wheelchair. And I said, well, I wasn't given anything. I was just told in a phone call. So they said, okay, no, we, we do need something from Virgin confirming the reasons for the cancellation. So I called Virgin again, and this time I got somebody more helpful. I explained the situation, and she said, oh, 
oh yeah, it shouldn't be an issue getting a refund. It should, we'll be able to put that down under a medical emergency. So she said, okay, I will uh, pass on the information to Flight Center. We'll be able to get that canceled and we'll be able to start working on the refund. So, okay, that's great. So after that, I booked some flights with Qantas, which went a lot more smoothly and <clears throat> had my holiday, had a wonderful time. On the day that I was due to fly back, I got an alert saying that I should get ready to check in for my Virgin flight. And I thought that's a bit strange because those flights were cancelled. So I had to get home and recover a little bit before dealing with this. And I ended up contacting Flight Center and said, look, I got an alert for a Virgin flight that I thought was cancelled. They contacted Virgin about it. Apparently, Virgin considered me a no-show when I didn't turn up to that flight home. They considered me a no-show and they were going to charge me a cancellation fee because I was a no-show. And I responded to Flight Center and I said, no, that's not correct. I was not a no-show. I was not, it was not a surprise that I wasn't going to be on the flight because Virgin were the ones who told me not to be on that flight three weeks prior, no, two weeks prior to the flight itself. They knew I was not going to be on that flight because they were the ones who told me not to get on it because of my wheelchair. I said previously they had told me that they would give me a refund. Can you, can you remind them of that and get me the refund? The person at Flight Center contacted Virgin, got back to me and said, they're not going to give you the refund because they don't provide refunds for no-shows. And they're not going to give you a special exemption in this case. Please do not respond to this email. And I thought, this, this, is, this is ridiculous, this is disgusting. I'm not going to let it go. Because this is, what, $300, $400 worth of flight tickets? I'm not going to let this go. So I wrote a complaint to Virgin Airlines, detailing from the beginning what had happened. My initial phone call with the special assistance line, and I explained that I didn't know the weight limit of the aircraft. And it seems as though there's not a secure way of knowing because even if I'd called the special assistance line, if I'd received this person on the special assistance line, all she would have told me is, I don't know. So it's not like I could have just called up and asked what the weight limit was because <coughs> I might not have found out. I was promised a refund that never came. I was signaled as a no-show for a flight I was told not to attend. And the good thing is I was able to go through my call logs and I was able to give them the dates and times of each of these phone calls. And I said, if you doubt me, please go through your own call logs and you will find the recordings of each one of these phone calls where your employees stated these things to me. And I said, I think that Virgin is showing that they have a lack of consideration for the disabled customers. You expect me to buy a plane ticket, gamble on whether or not my wheelchair will fit, and then if my wheelchair doesn't fit, I don't get a refund. I just have to keep buying plane tickets until I somehow stumble upon a, wheel, on a, upon a plane that fits. That's what you expect me as a disabled customer to do. There is no aftercare, there is no consideration. You promise a refund that, that I never get. And I said, all I'm asking for is my money back. That's, that's what I want. If you choose not to give me my money back, I will pursue things with the Dis Disabilities Discrimination Department. I will pursue that. All I want is my money back, that's all. They got back to me after a few weeks and said that they appreciated my complaint. They are very sorry for my experience. This is not the way that they want to do business and this is not the way that they want to treat their disabled customers and um, they will gladly give me a refund and uh, it might take up to 12 to 16 weeks. It takes about 30 seconds to uh, buy a plane ticket and uh, 12 to 16 weeks to get refunded for one apparently, which honestly is pretty standard. I do not recommend Virgin Airlines. As much as they have agreed to give me a refund, it took so much damn work. And there was so much lack of consideration 
for the disabled customers throughout the entire process. I do not recommend Virgin Airlines if you have a disability. I do not. I do not. That is today's video. That is today's video. Alright. Bless.